This is a cladogram, or a tree of life. This shows what is related to what according to evolutionary theory. Let's explain some more about how evolution scientists define these relationships. Here we have three totally different creatures that should have evolved from one shared ancestor. In this diagram we can see how this neatly grows from one simple ancestor into more developed creatures, all with one step at a time, such as legs evolving into wings, squares into triangles, color changes, things like that. In this case it is very clear, but uh, how about this one? Where should we put it? Well, um, let's see. It's got the wing and the elliptical body of the left creature, it's red color of the middle one, the shape of the head of the right one and the head color too, and it's bent legs also from the right one. That's odd. Now it's not clear what the relationship is. To solve puzzles like this, evolution scientists have invented the cladogram. How it works? Count the amount of similarities and the one that has the most similarities is assumed to be the closest relative. It doesn't matter what you put in the system, it always gives one answer. You can put in skeletons, living creatures, DNA, cars, airplanes, and it always gives one answer. Not because of the evidence, but because of the system. So in this example, the right one has three features similar, and so that is the closest relative. The wing's circular body and the red color are just due to coincidence or have another reason, such as evolutionary convergence. Of course, similar features that are not due to shared ancestors are very rare. The tree of life is unambiguous no matter if you base it on physical features or on DNA. Well, no. Actually, more than half the features that are similar is considered not to be due to shared ancestors. For example, the eye evolved from scratch at least 50 times individually. And we see features disappearing and reappearing throughout the cladograms all the time. And this gets quite extreme. Take a bee, for example. The bee has a very special way of reproduction. Yes, it takes a male and a female bee to reproduce, but there is only one female in an entire group that reproduces, and that one is called the queen. The ant has a similar way of reproduction. Since they are both insects, their shared ancestor may have had this property too. But there's a third species that's doing it in the same way. That is the naked mole rat. In this case, it is obvious that their shared ancestors did not have this property. Let's take another example. This is the platypus. It has a mammal fur and gives mammal milk to its babies, so that suggests it's a mammal. It even has a beaver tail. But it has a beak like a duck. It lays reptile-like eggs and the male has a reptile poison. So what is it? And what were its ancestors? This doesn't make sense, so it might help to take a look at its DNA. Most animals have an X and a Y chromosome for a male and an XX for a female. This is called the sex chromosome pair, as these define the gender of the creature. For the platypus, the X chromosome is a lot like that of a mouse. But the strange thing about platypus is that it has a second sex chromosome pair. The X chromosome of that second pair is very similar to ours. To make it even stranger, the platypus has a third sex chromosome pair, of which the X is similar to that of birds, even though that is called a Z chromosome. The platypus even has a total of five sex chromosome pairs. How did that happen? And how did one of these get similar to that of mice, another to humans, and another to birds? How did that evolve?